Hello everyone, my name is Barrick and I am one of the founders and lead engineers of the Redstone Development Foundation. And today I'm going to show you the upgraded version of my single character 7-bit ASCII display. This is the 11 character ASCII word processor with keyboard. Now right now on the left you see that the first character is selected so let's go type something in. Now this is the keyboard. It is 26 characters long going from A to Z on top, all of the symbols on your keyboard on the bottom, as well as four function keys. Bell, which was requested when I created the first uh, single character ASCII display, which simply does this. Aha! Clear all, which is pretty self-explanatory, backspace, and space. Now this row of pads right here is the shift key, quote unquote. That allows you to select the capitals or the top symbols on the keyboard. So let's go ahead and type, start typing something in. I'll start with this. An R. So we wait a second and it will pop up on the screen. Now you don't have to wait for it to pop up on the screen before you can continue typing. Uh, you can type as, almost as fast as you want. The only thing you have to wait for is the button to unpress, otherwise the signals will overlap and you'll confuse the decoder. And what will happen is you might end up with some character that you didn't want, or you might not end up with any character at all. But let's see what happens when I put something that I don't want. Let's say the uh, AND symbol. I don't want the AND symbol, even though I just pressed it. No big deal. I can go over to the function keys over here, hit backspace, and it will automatically erase the last key input. So you don't have to worry about screen selection. It's all handled within the mechanisms itself. So let's keep on typing. Lowercase e. D. Let's see if you guys can guess what I'm typing out here. Now all 94 characters that are on your keyboard are on this wall. So you can literally type out anything that you want. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Uh, R E D S T O. And I like to give it just a little bit of delay in between signals, uh, just to make sure that things don't get crossed. And to finish it up, we've got redstone. But we still got three spaces left. What should we put there? How about some good old-fashioned emoticons. One of my personal favorites here. Wait a moment. Hop up onto shift. Ta-da! That's about the face I make whenever I mess around with this stuff. I just love it. So there we have it. We have redstone and a smiley face. Let's see how it looks at night. Oops. Set. Ta-da! Very pretty. At least in my opinion. And just like the uh, single character ASCII display, all of the characters that are built into this, it actually uses the same decoder as my single character ASCII, which is right here. So you can take and adjust any of the characters and modify them if one of the characters, say you don't like the way the S looks or something like that, change it. And you can change it to whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be an S anymore. It can be some other symbol. It's all up to you. In fact, there are 94, as I said, combinations but there is a 95th character in 
Easter egg, if you will, that I challenge you to find. I think you'll get a kick out of it. But anyway, let's turn it back to daytime so that I can see what I'm doing. And we'll hit clear all, which will naturally wipe everything out and select the last character. Uh, you can hit backspace once all the characters are full and it will backspace to the to the last character. And that's the ASCII word processor. In a future video I'll be going through all the different components, how they all work, how they all tie together, and how the whole thing functions. But for now I want to say something that I've been meaning to say for a while. And that is Thanks, Notch. By including something as versatile as Redstone in your game, you've opened up all kinds of opportunities for people of all ages to learn about logic and learn about all the different things, the individual components that make up the complex electronic systems that we deal with on a daily basis. It's an educational opportunity unlike any other. So again, thank you. And a special thank you to VX Storm and TJ Watto, as well as several other members of the Redstone Development Foundation who helped me debug this thing by pressing buttons while I run around frantically trying to figure out why it's not working. And thank you for watching. So, until next time, happy redstoning.